Storm over Dien Bien Phu. This is a game in the Storm Over system, clearly. And it is a game about the first in the China War. Two players, one controlling the French and one the Viet Minh. And the Viet Minh are trying to take control of a series of strongholds controlled by the French at the beginning of the game. In fact, victory at the end will be determined based on the number of, uh, of key locations on the map that the Viet Minh have managed to control, that they managed to control by the end of the game. Two-player game mainly, but it can be played solitaire by a single player who controls both sides at the best of their possibilities. With the uh, caveat, however, that the game is card enhanced. It's not card driven because you could play an entire game without ever Playing a card, but the cards allow you to do so many sweet things. There are two separate decks, one for the Viet Minh and one for the French. And so, from time to time, you can play a card uh, to enhance an action that you're doing, or you can play a card for your impulse, which means that resolving the, car the card is... Uh, the action you're taking for the impulse. Also the Viet Minh cards have a number printed there which the French cards then do as you can see and these can be used to build trenches, we'll see what that means. So if you're playing by yourself uh, it means that you will need to handle that element. Maybe you can ignore the cards but then you're really missing something. The way I played, because I played the game solitaire controlling both sides, is simply I took out the cards that I was supposed to have, I drew the cards that I was supposed to have each turn, I kept them face up on the two sides of the board and then I would simply play them whenever it applies. So of course I know what's in the other hand, in the player of the other hand, but in the hand of the other player I mean, but that never really troubled me. I, I can do that, I can kind of isolate. When I play one side I don't think too much about the cards the other player controls. So it can be played that way, but again, it's not perfect uh, that way. But if the alternative is not playing the game at all, then I'll play it this way. Also, this card, if you don't know French, you're missing out. Now, the game is an area impulse game, so that means that the game is divided into areas, and then you will activate, uh, you will select each turn an area and you will activate units within that sector, within that area. But let's have an uh, overall look at the map. Uh, the French player will set up more or less in the central area of the map where the key locations that we're fighting for are placed. They have little stars to indicate that they matter particularly for victory conditions. Also they have a high defensive value, that is the number that you see there is a defensive value which will be between 0 and 3. So the French will set up here but they do not have nearly enough units even after they get reinforcements to control all of the locations as the Viet Minh keep coming from the edges of the board. The areas that have a red, a red number uh, in them are areas controlled by the Viet Minh and the French player can never enter them. However, the Viet Minh has another, has another limitation. They cannot enter areas containing French units, not the least during regular movement. A partial exception is if they use the assault action, which they have and the French player doesn't. Military units are represented by these uh, plane pieces here. They can not the thickest uh, game pieces that you have on the market, but definitely uh, sturdy, glossy, in any case, good quality. There are three pieces of information that matter particularly. The numbers here are attack, defense value, and movement. The other number is either where they set up or they turn, they come as, they come as reinforcements. Light blue pieces, of course, represent the French, and we're just gonna put a bunch of pieces kind of randomly there. Important thing, the units have two sides. One is when the unit is fresh and then a side with a lighter background and only the defensive value to indicate that the unit is spent. Super important. You have a maximum stacking number of nine units per area that applies at all times. And so again, just, just a bunch of units around to show you how it works. Because you can keep them a little bit messy like that. Well, it's not a good idea, but you could. And again, it's very important that you know which units are fresh and which units are spent. 
as we said, players will alternate taking turns and during your turn you select an area and you select a number of fresh units within that area and those units will all do the same things. They don't all have to activate. So for example, I activate this area and I decide to activate these three units only for movement and then I can move them from area to area up to their full movement allowance and the number of movement points that it costs to reach a new area depends on the on a terrain features such as maybe we're crossing a river but also depends on the presence of enemy units if for example we're entering an area containing enemy units or leaving an area containing enemy units this again applies to the french player especially because normally the vietnamese player cannot enter areas controlled by the well that have a presence of french units in them so we move in there and after we perform the action the units count as spent so that, for example, would be that for that for that impulse. And then maybe the Vietnamese player decides to activate these three units also for movement, moves them there, and they become spent after movement. The other big action that you want to perform, of course, is to attack. Now, when you attack, and suppose we are going to have some of these units attacking that area, uh, the the default attack is fire. When you fire at a unit, you will select, well, they fire at an enemy area actually, you select the units that are firing. Suppose that all of these units actually are firing. Then you total the attack value of all of the units that are attacking area. One, two, three, four, five. Remember, they will all become spent at the end of that. And you roll two dice and you also apply other possible modifiers that may come from cards. So you will have your total attack value. Then you look at the highest defense value of the unit in the defending area. If these people are firing at those people then they all have eight so they would be, that would be eight. Plus you roll two dice again and you add the defensive value of the area for the zero B1 if that applies, for example, that applies if the units are firing from another area. If units are firing from the same area as the defender, then you don't apply the defensive value. If the defensive value is equal to or higher than the attack value, then nothing happens, there is no effect. If the attack value is higher than the defensive value, then the difference in the number of hits that the defender has to absorb and each hit can be absorbed in one of these ways just nice to have a look at the uh, section from the manual that tells you about that because I like the flexibility that you have by the way it's the kind of flexibility you have in most storm over games for example by absorbing a single hit you can absorb a single hit by flipping a face up fresh unit and turn to spend so you cannot act this turn or you can retreat a face down spent unit to an adjacent area you can pay for two hits by eliminating a face down unit or flip a face up unit make it spent and retreated basically you're doing both things that you see here in a row or you just eliminate a face-up unit and that will allow you to spend three or to pay for three uh, hits that you received as we said the uh, Vietnamese player also has uh, several there's at least two special actions one is to sap that is to build trenches you can sap by uh, spending some fresh units in the area that you want to you want to build trenches or you can discard a card and look at the number only ignore everything else and that is the number of levels of trenches that you are improving your area by an area can have a defensive value of up to three so for example that's uh, that area has a defense value of one if for my turn i discard this card and don't spend any units as the vietnam player it can improve the area by two and then i place a trench marker that indicates the new defensive value which is now three as i added two levels again you can also spend units to increase an area by a level or more up to a total of no more than three but a defensive a defense of three 
that you're adding to the die roll, uh, it's pretty good, it's pretty good. Uh, the French player to take an air like that really needs to get in there and turn into close and personal. The Vietnamese player, however, as we said, they have a limitation. They cannot usually enter areas containing enemy units, not doing normal movement. However, the Vietnamese player also has this extra action available to them only, which is uh, Assault. An Assault can be performed only from an area that has a defensive value of 3, either printed on the map or brought up to 3 by trenches. So, from an area that has a defensive value of 3, the Vietnamese player can declare an attack into an adjacent enemy area. That attack is counted as if the defensive value of the target area was 0. You resolve the attack as normal, inflict the hits on the defender as normal, as normal, if any hits. Then two things happen. The attacker will always lose a unit automatically because the assaults are bloody. However, if after the assault and the hits on the French player have been inflicted, the assaulted area is vacated, then the units of the attacker can move into it before they become spent. Basically, you can imagine is that as an attack that is happening between the two areas or as the gaming player is trying to enter that area, but they manage to enter there only if the area that they attacked is empty and they still have to pay that, that uh, mandatory loss of one unit. However, then they also get replacements, then they also get reinforcements, they get more people into the confrontation so they can afford a couple of those human waves attacks. Especially during turn one, because it's super important during turn one, uh, assaults can be performed by the Vietnamese player from any area, regardless of the defensive value. It's only started from turn to that the rule that you can assault only from areas with a defensive value of 3 applies. This is the idea, turn after turn, uh, players will alternate impulses, the game turn is over when both players pass, the Vietnamese player can also try to shut down a turn early by simply passing, in which case the French player has to play a card for each uh, player turn that they still want to play. Um, until either the French player has no cards anymore and the Vietnamese player has passed or both players pass in a row, then the game turn is over, you go to the next. Each turn will also tell you the number of cards that the players receive, that changes throughout the game, but this is the general idea. Continue like this, impulse after impulse, player turn after player turn, and then game turn after game turn, until the end of the game, and then the number of victory locations that the Vietnamese player controls will tell you who wins and who loses. Storm over the NBM Fu. Good game, good game. Also, it was pretty cheap. I bought it on the website of MMP. There was a sale. I don't know if it's still going on, but I remember it was pretty, pretty cheap. And so, one case where you don't always get what you pay for. Sometimes you get a lot more. Even at regular price, this is a good game. I, well, I love the system. I like the system. I like it very much. Uh, I haven't played a game in the system that I hate yet. So I went in with solid expectations and I had a solid game experience. So the system is strong and I like the things uh, that I like about the system that I find here. That's a reiteration of the system. No problem there. It probably puts more emphasis on card play than other games in the storm over system and makes it a little more complicated for uh, some of you to play solitaire. Not for me because I can play card games solitaire and somehow I don't have a problem with that. But your mileage may vary. So the Storm Over, it's a really good system with a lot of flexibility. I like the back and forth, the area impulse. You don't have to commit to a full Igo Yugo, although it is. Then my Igo may be a single unit, and then Yugo may be a human wave, and then I can figure out uh, some other Igo in different ways. The flexibility of the back and forth, uh, your ability of activating some units, uh, not at all if you want to pass, or a ton of units if you were concentrating those in a single area. It's just great. 
And then also I like the fact that instead of just the loss of steps that you have in many other games, you have a more fluid situation because you need to get spent just because they get tired. But at the same time, uh, being spent also means that they're closer to, uh, to being dead because getting spent is one of the effects of getting hit. If you're just spent and you make it until the end of the turn, you're gonna be turned to the first side again. But if people keep shooting at those spent units, those are gonna evaporate. So you may have a little a little bit of a back and forth. I almost think of it as a zigzagging line called I fire at you from this area here. Now my units are spent, so you're gonna fire at them from that area. Now the units that fire there are spent, so maybe from here I'm gonna attack you. So you may see a little bit of that but not necessarily, and somehow since your spent units may be the target of multiple of my fresh units, which then once spent may be the target of several other types of attacks from my opponent, then actually you have more flexibility there again than, than just a single whoever attack last is gonna be attacked next. It may happen to some extent, but it's within such a large range of options that does not feel forced. But what I really like about this implementation here, and again talk about a fluid situation, is precisely how you have a situation in which both sides have the role of the attacker and the defender. Uh, recently I played a lot of games about the Bulger, and I love the historical topic, but as the allies you are going to get pummeled in the face for turns and turns until you bring the reinforcements in and then you're going to pummel the Germans for turns and turns. So there's a clearly, I'm the attacker, now you're the defender. Maybe that switches, but once you switches, we know who the attacker and the defender is. Here, who knows? Because at the beginning you have the French that are defending some of those strong points and they feel very tough and big and they can withstand some major assaults in turn one. But then you realize to really defend those positions you need a lot of people and you're leaving a lot of other positions empty. You simply as a French player do not have enough forces to defend well and effectively every position. So actually, as you're there defending some positions, now the Vietnamese player is controlling some of other ones, and some have maybe been left empty. So it can be a parallel race from both sides to reach those that have been left empty. It can be that the defender that was the French player now tries to take back some positions uh, captured by the Vietnamese. In so doing, you weaken some uh, strong points, and now, as you were the attacker, those get attacked and you're the defender there. You have a situation with such fluidity in which both players or both sides are constantly trying to defend some positions and take positions over from the other side. Um, I don't think I've seen many other games actually that somehow uh, annul the distinction between attacker and defender so effectively as this game does. And that alone to me is remarkable. So there is a lot of replay value in that as different positions will be defended or attacked by different players at different times in different games. Um, and it's pretty good because a map, although it looks, it's a large map and it has several areas, doesn't have a ton of areas. Some of those are pretty large and sometimes at the beginning you can get tricked. Like this position is pretty far from that one. In truth, because of how large the areas are, boop, 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 is only three areas away. Uh, so actually it doesn't have a ton of different playable spaces, but within each space you can have a different alchemy of units, a different mix of units, and again, you can attack or defend from so many positions at different times. The for a map that objectively doesn't have a lot of variety, you can have a lot of variety in terms of gameplay, again, because of this. And to me, that is the turning point. This is what makes this game different from a lot of other war games that I play and a lot also of other store over games that I play. So high recommendation from me. I was really pleased and really impressed. Playing this game was a lot of fun because as I was switching from each side, uh, I wasn't switching from attacker and defender, but switching, I was then considering where should be the attacker, where should be the defender, where should keep a low profile, hoping nothing happens there, because some areas of the map you can't cover. So actually, there was a whole order of interesting problems to analyze every time that I switch, every time that I control one or two sides. 
High praise from me for Storm over Dien Bien Phu. It doesn't hurt that, at least now, if the sale is still going on, it's pretty inexpensive. If you had to buy it at full price, I still recommend it. Consider picking it up because this is a really solid design.